We're here working with the South Carolina Hospital Association and hospitals in South Carolina up on a challenge, a challenge that in one area of healthcare, mislabeled specimens, it's not a good thing. It's a patient safety event. We're here under the proposition that in 90 days, we can reduce the frequency of those events by 90%. We can indeed produce better outcomes. So join us, join us in learning how to do that. Based off of nationwide trends, our state trends, our hospital trends, we did not want to harm a patient here based off of a mislabeled lab. We had put some processes in place, red rules being one of them, and we decreased our mislabeled specimens a good amount. However, we wanted even more of a decrease. What made this effort particularly interesting to us is that um, managing uh, the challenge of, of mislabeled specimens is something that I think every organization, healthcare organization, struggles with. Uh, the, the solutions that we've seen in the past have, have mostly relied on a more or less a red rules uh, approach, or that is uh, adding layers of a procedure and saying these rules are inviolate. You can't violate these rules. So we called David Marks and Scott Griffin and had them come in and do some risk modeling with us. And we spent a week, all of us, at the table, frontline employees, quality, risk. The power of the, of, the, of the prospective risk modeling tool is that we can actually see where an intervention would be most effective. Having a culture of learning is so important and this helps put that into perspective and it's like the real life thing. It's all the elements of just culture um, shown in one exercise. There's a lot of different ways this can fail. And, and, and again, what, what you have to trust us a little bit on in building the risk model is we try to identify all the different ways it can fail and how do you intervene across all those different ways. What is going on in the process or the system that makes you want to work around the process? I think if we can identify from staff why, why the workaround? I think that helps because they have good information to give us. It's not just about us giving them a directive or an edict. You know, we're partners in, in the patient's care and in the outcome. So the more information that we have from them, the better the process. We, we identified immediately several problems. We identified that we had multiple policies and procedures in place. For the one policy, it was um, name and medical record number, which was a non-digit. Um, so that um, was kind of, in, in my opinion, kind of unreasonable because um, you can very well get numbers mixed up, start seeing numbers that really aren't there. All of us drift. All of us will make mistakes. The task for an organization is to be intellectually honest with themselves around what types of procedures, what types of tasks are actually doable. One small change can make such a huge difference. You don't have to have these magnanimous processes and policies and rigidity um, within the hospital. You just need to be able to be clear and concise and simple processes for the hospitals and the nurses to be able to follow. And then they will respond to that. So what we would do is, is re review the interven in the interventions. One was review, reverse course on the red rule. The staff sees this as very punitive that, you know, very strict rules if I do something wrong, you know, I'll be punished, I'll lose my job. And this was an opportunity to really present an initiative that would make sense to the nursing staff, make it easier for them to follow the rules, and of course have good outcomes for patients. So all the different failure modes we looked at during the week, uh, we tried to identify what was the intervention that will actually cut across all the different ways this can happen. That's how we got to the final check. We thought that the intervention was so simple uh, that it could be communicated in a, in a very effective way. So three numbers can save my life. The final check, say it out loud, that is, check the final three numbers in the medical record, say it out loud, which is another way of, of getting uh, that double check done with the individual. It's simple. The new procedure is this. Okay, One, just check your ID here. confirm the name. David Mark. Two, confirm the date of birth. Birthday is 8-8-1965. Draw the blood specimen. In the third and final step, verify the last three numbers of the medical record number from the armband to the blood specimen labels. Say them out loud. Okay, I'm just gonna check your armband to these specimens. 387, 387, 387, 
seven. Okay. That's it. Okay, Mr. Scott, I'm just gonna confirm that we have matched the book the label. Have one, three, four. One, three, four. Okay, thank you. Stay there at the bedside. Confirm last three digits the medical record number out loud. Armband versus the the vial of blood you have. The last three numbers, I think that's pretty simple. And I think anything that becomes simple for the staff becomes more doable. Anytime change, you know, there's a little bit of resistance, but we have shift huddles at the beginning of each shift, 7 a.m. and 7 p.m. And for about two weeks, it was reviewed in those huddles. So we made sure we got each staff member. Education went around reviewing it with all the staff. Um, and then the management team, we roved through the ED, making sure the staff was doing what we had asked them to do, and if not, correcting them there and coaching them to where they would um, do what we'd asked them to do. If the staff knows that I'm not going to be disciplined for this, that it's okay that I can raise my hand if I do make a mistake, I think that will play a major role in compliance and staff feeling comfortable with thinking that they can raise their hand because they're doing the right thing. I um, have definitely spoken with the um, educators of the emergency department actually have come up to me and said we got a few near misses that you know the staff came up and um, we're very excited that they actually caught the themselves having mislabeled something at the bedside by doing the final check. The staff seem to be very um, receptive to, to doing it and and obviously know that it works for the people who have, who have been caught in the near miss situation. What we know about human behavior is that rules are not always the most powerful or strongest influences on our behavioral choices. So our approach is to look at the, the motivations that, 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 that are in play in any organization and how a nurse or a phlebotomist or a lab tech uh, would be motivated to do their job. And we know that there are often time constraints, uh, pressures around how the job is done, disruptions. So we found that you know, you've got to have a process that you can follow that's simple and that you can do it every single time. And I think this process allowed them to do that and go one better and, and, and be compliant with expectations. In the Just Culture model, we talk about if you're not responsive to coaching, we do go down a disciplinary path. So don't look at that at-risk behavior piece. Um, this, if you're not responsive, we go look at the system, what's causing the person to drift, but ultimately there's a path that we call repetitive at-risk behavior, where we ultimately lead that person down a disciplinary path. We might even say, look, you don't see the risk. I get that you don't see the risk, but you work here, you have to align your choices with the expectations that we have. So the idea here is take the heat off of the air. People make mistakes. The accident, the, the, the wrong med delivered to the patient, the misdiagnosis, take the heat off that, put it on the behavioral choices that are the precursor to that mistake. Hold people accountable for the choices. This whole business of improving care is not to improve the care of the patient by punishing the staff. It's to develop a partnership where we're in this together. It's the, it's the obligation of the leadership team to make sure we make it easy on the staff. I think people are really hungry because they're tired of being whacked. They're tired of red rules. Um, and I think they, I think, innately they know there's a better way and the better way is show me the better way what can I change my behavior that can um, have a positive impact I mean it's working as you scroll across the Excel spreadsheet and you see low numbers and, and for them to be where they are right now I mean I think that's phenomenal the last three months there has not been a single mislabeled lab blood draw from the ED so to now be able to go back to the staff and say, if you do the final check, it will work. I can show them in numbers that if, they're if they are doing what we've asked them to do, they're eliminating the mislabeled specimens. We've convinced the South Carolina Hospital Association that in 90 days, we can reduce the rate by 90% across South Carolina hospitals. But it's designing the right socio-technical systems, and that's our proposition that we as a world whether it's airline accidents, whether it's medical errors in a hospital, or whether it is poverty around the world, homelessness around the world, we can produce better outcomes, and that's what we're out to show the world.